Welcome back to part four of getting the old sporty 40 back on the road. Last week we got our uh, rotors mounted. This week, let's see if we can get some calipers mounted. Uh, before we get started, let me show you this. I got my mic right here. That's uh, they call that a dead cat. <laughs> it goes over the mic to reduce wind noise, you know, hitting the mic. Um, I've already tested it, and it does help, but not as much as I want to. So I just got done ordering a lapel mic. It'll be here tomorrow. We'll try it out. But for now, we'll, we'll use that right there. Anyway, um, we need to get our calipers mounted. And as you can see, I got one mocked up here, got it clamped up. Um, been racking my brain how I'm gonna do the bracket. I got a pretty good idea. Um, well, I need to get one of the backing plates, get it on the table over there so I can get my bolt pattern. Um, I might use cardboard first as a template, or if I got any real thin metal, I might use it. Anyway, let me get the backing plate, get up there on the table, and we'll, we'll get some measurements, trace it out. All right, I got the backing plate tore apart and all that stuff off of it. Got me a piece of cardboard. I'm going to put it right here, trace these holes, this hole, and that will be, this is going to be our pattern to make our uh, caliper bracket over there. So what I need to do, actually what I need to do, let's bend this down real quick. Where's my comma? All right, now what we'll do, We'll lay that right there, we'll lay that right there, approximately there. Let me go find a pen, we'll trace that out. All right, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna need that hole there, but we'll trace it out anyway, it won't hurt nothing. Now I gotta go find my hole punch set, and uh, we'll punch these holes out to, I don't know, whatever they are. And then we'll go over to the car. All right, I found my punch set. I wonder what size these are. Let me measure them real quick. All right, these holes are approximately 716s. I I got a 716s punch somewhere right here. 7016s, that's what that is. All right, let me punch these holes out real quick. There's one. I gotta cut that. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna wait on that. Um, let's get over here on the car and pull that rotor off and just see what we see. All right, let's get this rotor off, but before I do, let me show y'all this. I noticed this in last week's video at the end when I spun this. She's got a wobble. Oh yeah, watch it right there. It's pretty bad, sure is. And if you watch here, it's, it's the machining. Um, watch this edge here, it'll get thin and thick, thin and thick, watch that. Yep, that is what you call garbagerie machinery. It probably come from China, I would say. This one will be going back to Rockato. Well, certainly will be. That one over there, it was fine. This one here, she's got a wee bit of a wobble. We don't send her back. All right, let me get the steering arm back on here. And uh, then we'll get this cardboard on. It goes behind it. That one will go there. That one will go there. Now, I got to cut a, a chunk out because it's got a slide in there behind it. So let me do that real quickly. We'll probably have to make about seven or eight of these templates before I get it like I want it. Uh, me and Daddy used to joke um, when we were building something. We'd have to do it. At least twice. The first one was just a trial run. <laughs> and that's what this is probably going to be. All right, what does that look like? Well, it looks like garbage. I'm thinking I'm going to have to cut that front one off and just use three bolts. So let's try that. 
let's chop her off right here. Seems like the the kit that I'm copying seems like that's what they do too. They only use three bolts. Then of course I need to cut this here sign off because it's in the way. I got to cut way on up in here, I reckon. Gotta cut some more right here. This will take a while, fellas. Alright, we're getting closer. You know what I've done? I've done messed up. <laughs> I done messed up. I done cut my stuff out for my caliper over here. You big dummy. Well, let's get this portion right and then we can make us another piece of cardboard. That ain't no big deal. All right, now we're hitting here. I need to make that a little wider. So it ain't leaving much on that bolt hole, is it? All right, that's better. Uh, now I gotta get the caliper area. I got to make another piece because I cut too much out over here, I think. Yes, sir. Let me cut it out. Let's, let's do it about like that. Alright, that's looking a little better. Where are my other bolts? Let's put them in there. See what we got. I need to measure that steering arm, see how thick it is, because I gotta make two spacers up here for it. That's this part pretty much. You know, I'll do a little trimming on it, make it look a little better, but that's pretty much it. Let's get the rotor back on, get the caliper up here and see see where we're at. As far as that goes. All right, I got me a caliper up here, and uh, I made me a second version of my um, bracket. Y'all can't really see it all that well, but that's pretty much it right there. Let me pull it out, and I'll show you the whole thing. All right, here is the original one I made. Here's the second one I just got done making. Um, these, this is for the driver's side. This is the back. Uh, we're using the two top holes on the spindle and then one bottom hole. I'm going to add just a wee bit here to strengthen it up a little bit because i got a big old gap there, so might as well add some. Uh, the next step is this right here. This is a piece of aluminum. I don't know, it might be an eighth inch. It'll be a lot easier to work with than uh, thicker metal because, you know, you want to make a steel pattern because, you know, cardboard kind of flops around. But anyway, what I plan on doing, I'm going to make a, another template out of this. What I'm gonna do firstly is get my bolt holes transferred to this metal with this. Because if I use this, they might be off. Because this, you know, like I said, it flexes. Anyway, mark my bolt holes, get them drilled out, then bolt this to this, trace this out, cut it out, and then we'll, we'll be able to put it on here and try it out, you know, with, with actual metals. Um, I gotta space it out, probably an eighth of an inch or so. I'm gonna just use washers right now, and if they're good enough, well, that's that's what we'll use. But let me get the holes drilled here, get this traced and cut out. All right, this is called a transfer punch set, in case y'all don't know. They're different sizes. This is 7 16 because those holes are 7 16 It'll fit pretty tight so we can get in the center real good. Anyway, what I'm gonna do here, get this lined up on here, you know, make sure I got enough room to to make the whole pattern. And then I'm gonna take this little fella right here and we're gonna lay it over them holes. Just like that right there. Then I'm gonna take this punch, stick it in the hole, make me a mark, it made me a mark. Now, when you're doing this and you're having to do multiple holes, you do not wanna do all three of them at one time. You do one, bolt it together tight, you do another one, bolt it together tight, and then you do the other one. That's what we're going to do here. There's my hole. So let me get my drill. Actually, let's use a drill press over here. I don't use it very much. Let's go over and drill that out. Now what you do is put this back over here. You're just trying to make sure that template is, you know, you got metal everywhere you want to cut. You need to put this back on here. 
and get you a bolt. Dig it through the hole, put a nut on it, tighten her up. Just like that right there. Alright. Now we gotta mark another hole. Now let's get over here and drill our second hole. All right, we do the same thing again. Get them lined up, get this lined up, get the bolts in it. Mark your third hole, go drill it. All right, let me go drill that and I'll be right back. All right, I got that third hole drilled out. So now we bolt the template to the metal. I'm gonna trace it out. Um, I might use a black marker because that's easier to see than just scribing it. Uh, yeah, let me find it real quick. All right, I'm going to trace it out. And remember, I was going to add some right here. Probably, probably about like this. Make it a little bit bigger. Just like that right there. Now, I want to try to cut this with a jigsaw. I don't know how successful I will be, but hopefully it'll work. Is roughly all right let's get this here rotor off i'll get this here bracket on all right i ground a little bit off here and here let's see if this will fit now remember i got to space it out these are about a hundred thousandths thick these wishers we're going to start there if i have to go more well then i will all right there it is it is on let me turn it so y'all can see it, maybe. What y'all think about that? Looks pretty. Let me get the rotor on, and then the, we'll stick the caliper up there and see what it looks like. All right, let's see what she looks like up here. All right, right now, with the brakes applied, that'll be squished over like that right there. And I've got approximately... Well, I just dropped my scallopers and tore them up, so that's, that's good. That's real good. I swear. <laughs> I give up. Let me put these back together real quick. Well, upon further inspection, I do believe this is going to work. Yes, sir. Um, you know, my re issue a minute ago was I didn't have enough room right here for this pad. It was, it was hitting the bracket. Well, as you can see down in there, maybe I doubled up on my whooshers. And that moved the bracket that away. Give me room for this pad. See, I got plenty of room for it to move now. And now, um, here's the bracket. Here's the caliper. Well, on this side of the bracket to this side of the caliper is about 410 thousandths. Um, I was wanting to use 3 eighths metal, and I got plenty of room. Go. This is an eighth of an inch plus. I got 410 to work with here. So 3 eighths of an inch metal is what I need. Um, the steel store, I'm pretty sure it's closed by now, so I don't think I've got any 3 8 but let me run over to Mama's and scrounge around and see what I can find. If I can't find nothing, well, we're probably done for the day, and we'll head to the steel store tomorrow. Well, it is the next day, and as you can see, I done been to the metal store and got me some metal. I had some, but it laid in the woods for 20 or 30 years before I ever got a hold of it, and one side of it was really, really pitted, looked bad. So... I decided just let's go get us some brand spanking new metal. So there it is right there, 3 8 thick. Yes, sir. Uh, also, I'm speaking to you on my new microphone. I've already tried it out, and I don't like it. I don't like the sound. It's too thin sounding. And the reason I don't like lapel mics is 
most YouTubers I see with them, you can hear you can hear them breathe, you can hear their lips smack. I just I can't stand that. Uh, I'm gonna try this for just a little bit, see how it does. But uh, last night editing the video, this shotgun mic, it sounded pretty good. So that uh, uh, that may be what we use. But I did notice one thing: my fan was bouncing off of me and hitting the mic. So I got to be a little more careful of that where I place the fan. But yes, sir, I think I think that shotgun mic is going to do pretty doggone good. Um, anyway, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to do what we did yesterday, except for this metal. We'll drill my holes one at a time, bolt my pattern to it, and then uh, I'll get the plasma cutter out and uh, we'll go to cutting that up. Let me show y'all a little trick real quick. See all them little dots around my pattern there? Well, I took my center punch and went all around it with my hummer, made them punch marks. And here's why. If I put Dicom on this and scribe it, well, you know, I'm using a plasma cutter to cut it out. Well, that'll burn that Dicom away and I'll lose my line. Uh, scribing it, it's, it's not a big enough mark for me to see. Um, if you use a magic marker or whatever, that'll get burned away. If you use soapstone, that'll get burned away. Um, where I used to work, the welder, he showed me that trick right there. Yes, sir, and it's it's a pretty good trick. Um, even with that, my eyes will still <laughs> have trouble seeing that, but it trust me, it helps a lot. Anyway, let me get over on the table. We'll start cutting on it. Well, MLS has struck again. It sure has. Uh, my plasma cutter is acting up. Well, ever since I bought the thing, I bought it three years ago. And ever since I've owned it, it'll cut real good for just a minute or two. And it's like the power gets cut in half. Well, you can see where I've been trying to blow a hole and testing it here. And it just, it won't cut. And then, I well, I thought it was air pressure. So I let the air pressure build back up and it seemed to work again. Then it quit. Well, I let the air pressure build back up and it wouldn't work this time, so I knew it wasn't air. Um, didn't know what it was. Well, I called the company Prime Weld right there on the side of it. Uh, I bought it on Amazon three years ago. And anyway, before I bought it, I did some research on it. And from what I read, the company has just absolutely wonderful customer service. So I thought, well, let me call them and maybe, you know, they know what the problem is. I can fix it. So I called them and the guy was super nice. And within three minutes, you know, he wanted my address, sending me a shipping label to ship it to him so they can uh, check it out and see what's wrong with it. I said, okay, hung the phone up. Well, today's Friday, and, you know, it'd be probably end of next week before I get that back. I didn't really want to use my torch. I wanted that thing to work because it, it ain't been right ever since I owned it. Well, you know me. I got to fooling with it, thinking maybe I could fix it. And, well, I got to wiggle in the cord right here, and boom, it just... Yeah, like a brand new one. That flame got really long and strong. So I thought, hmm, there's something going on here. So I took her apart, and let me show you what I found. See that red wire right there? It's got a naked spot on it. See that naked spot? Well, it was up under this piece here, this silver piece, and it was shortened out. That's what the problem was. Well, uh, I got it out from under there, put the handle back together, went over and checked it, and yes, sir, it's, it's working just fine. I can wiggle that handle all around and work it just fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that wire up so it don't ground out no more. We're going to put the handle back together. We're going to go over there, finish cutting that, and I don't have to send that back. I'll email them, and maybe I can get a, at least a free lead, free gun, whatever you call this. Anyway, let me put this back together.
Well, I got one braquette ground and shaped pretty good. Um, I got this air hose run over here to where your brake hose would normally go. Eighth inch pipe thread sort of fits that, but don't get rough with it because it's, yeah, it's just barely in there. Anyway, that air has got this clamped in place. And when you're doing this, do not forget to space your caliper from your rotor. I got a little, little whoosher right there and I got one on the bottom too. And see this space right here, you got to get that centered, um, or that caliper will rub your bracket. Anyway, it is ready for me to get me a transfer punch right here. Make this hole, drill and tap, and then do the bottom one, and we'll be done with this. All right, fellas, I got my transfer punch right here. I got to get that pretty straight, you know, because it's, it's wanting to wobbly wobble. I'm going to say that right there looks pretty good. Let me try that. Well, the mark is made. I'm going to see. It looks, it looks pretty flush. So, let me pull this caliper off of here. And we will drill and tap this. Actually, I might can just turn it around here, drill and tap it. Let me try that first. Well, I couldn't get the wheel to turn enough to drill and tap this. I had to take it off, but I don't look too bad for plasma cutter and a grinder. It's a, it's a little bit rough. You know, they ain't just perfect lines, but... You know what? Won't nobody ever see it, so I don't care. Also, um, I always clean my little my little lens here before I video. You know, make sure I ain't got no finger smudges. Well, I went to clean it this time, and well, remember when I was grinding over here a minute ago? Yes, sir. It's it's got little speckles all in it. I hope it's not messing the picture up. I don't think it is. Anyway, let's get this to there, drill it out, bring it back over here, and tap that hole out. All right, let's get this hole tapped. If I don't get this straight, well, we are in trouble. Tell you what I'm going to do. Let's go over here and get it started on the drill press. All right, do not try this at home. Um, but what you want to do, well, you can do it by hand if you want to. Just turn this. That's, that's what we'll do. That way, we know it's getting started straight. And once we get it started, well, you just undo it and take it over there to the vise and, and do it by hand. I'll get this undone here in a minute. All right, let's go to the table. I mean the vise. All right, now that we got it straight, we just keep on a trucking with it until we get them threads cut. When it gets down to stuff like this right here, I get nervous because, you know, this is the last thing you got to do. If you mess it up, well, <laughs> you got to start all over. I don't like that. All right, where's my bolt? Let's see if the bolt will fit. Oh, yeah. All right, let me get over here and put this back on, get this other one drilled and tapped, and then I'll be back. All right, let me show you all this real quick in case you're ever doing this. Remember how I was afraid I didn't have my punch, you know, straight? Well, watch this. All you got to do, you know, got that little spacer right there. Well, you just mash it flat. Watch what it does to my punch. It straightens it out automatically. Oh, yeah. That's all you got to do. All right, fellas, here comes the moment of truth. I got both of these holes drilled and tapped. And if both of these bolts start up good and easy, well, we got her made. There's one. Let me go get the other one. All right, here we go. Does this one start? Does it line up? Oh, I want you to look at that. Just like it come from the factory. It sure is. Let me tighten it up. All right. Um, there it is. Let's roll this rotor see what happens. Oh, yeah, that's just awesome. Of course, that rotor is really, <laughs> really warped. Let me throw the air to it. Where did it go? Here it is. All right, let me get her spinning. Oh, yeah. She locked right up, buddy. This is pretty doggone awesome. Yes, sir. It's been a little bit of work. I ain't going to lie to you, but pretty awesome. 
I just wanted to show you all this real quick. Um, this inside pad, it's got uh, just a little bit of movement. I mean, that's all you need. But I would like to have more because, you know, pads, they may not all be the same. They may get some a little thicker and they won't fit. So, you know, this space here is determined by my whooshers down in there. Well, I got, what, 200,000 now? I may go another washer thick and I make it, I don't know, 250, 300. What I might do is get online tonight and see if I can just find a quarter inch thick spacer for a 7 16 hole and just buy four of them and use them instead of these whooshers. Um, but I mean, this this will be okay, but I would like a little more room. But let me tell you, overall, I'm extremely, extremely pleased with this right here. Um, it's late and I'm tired. I'm going in the house tomorrow. I'll get that other caliper on and then I reckon it's, it'll be time to start working on some swinging pedals and master cylinder and all that. We all look at here. We now have two calipers mounted on the front of this old car. Yes, sir. This is the passenger side over here. I just got done grinding and shaping that uh, bracket and uh, drilling and tapping both of them holes right there for the caliper bolts. Looking pretty doggone good if I must say so myself. Um, this is Saturday. And I've told y'all before that I kind of take it easy on Saturday. I don't get in no great big hurry to get anything done. Um, and, well, this is when I mow my yard, Mama's yard, too, on Saturdays, usually. So that takes up a few hours of the day. I got to, I got to go do that here in a little bit. But um, there's an old car in the woods that I want to go look at the pedals. We may steal them, that, uh, the whole pedal assembly, and put them in this car here. So let's head to the woods and go look at that. But before we do that, let me, let me tell you this. Let me apologize profusely for the audio that happened yesterday. I did some editing last night of yesterday's work, and yeah, that mic, it's gone in the drawer and will never be taken back out. It started out okay, but it seems like when I got over here, plasma cutting and grinding, something happened to it, and it just, well, it sounds like it was recorded on a potato from the year of 1922. It's pretty bad. I think we'll continue to use that little shotgun mic. I think it's going to work pretty good as far as you know, taking care of the echo. Yeah, that's what we're going to use. Anyway, let's head to the woods real quick and go look at that old car. Well, I went to the woods <laughs> and looked at the Impala. Well, it took me 30 minutes just to get the door open. And I didn't like what I saw. But uh, if you're wondering why I'm out of breath, well, <laughs> I come over here to Mama's and looked at Daddy's old S10. Opened the door. It went to moving stuff around, and I don't know if y'all can see there or not. <laughs> Let me zoom in. Yes, sir. I disturbed the yellow jacket's nest in the seat. Uh-huh. They're flying everywhere. I had to take off running. Drop my flashlight. You can see it shining right there. I got to get over there and get it some kind of way. One of them popped me in my hand here. Hurts a little bit, but... Uh, yes, sir. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do about getting my flashlight. But I can tell you right now, we ain't... <laughs> We ain't worried about no pedals in an S10, no sir. If I can get my flashlight after a while, well, we're gonna shut that door and let them be. Well, we are deep in the jungles of Tennessee once again. <laughs> we're here to the 69 Impala. Oh, look at there, it's a Bel Air. I didn't even realize that. Anyway, I ought to steal these badges right here too. Uh, 327. Anyway, this is the vehicle that dude's 327 three-speed rear end come out of. The only thing left is the rear end under it. You know, we took the motor and the transmission out. Um, I looked at these pedals, the whole pedal assembly, Saturday, and I thought, nah, it'd be too hard to get it out. Well, I got to have pedals. So I think what I'm going to do is just steal the pedals. That's it. Leave the assembly, you know, the hanging part, leave it there. Just get the pedals and maybe the shaft, and uh, I'll have to make all the other stuff. Well, let me get these out. When I get to the shop... I'll explain everything I'm doing. Well, let me tell you, it's about 9,000 degrees out here today, and there ain't no wind blowing at all. That was no small feat, but look here. Got a clutch and a brake pedal. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me get my tools loaded up and get all this shut up, and, well, we'll head back to the shop. Well, it's about 6 o'clock in the evening, and I'm just now getting back to the shop. Yes, sir. I ain't got nothing done today as far as working on this old car here. You know, one of them days, everything else pops up. Uh, Mama's there, quit again. Ended up being a thermostat. I had to go to town to get a thermostat. And then 
Uh, if you've ever wired a thermostat, you know that no two thermostats ever wire up the same. Don't know why, but they don't. So I had to study on that for a while. <laughs> it's the house was 83 degrees and I had the, <laughs> I had the heat going. It got a little warm. Anyway, I got that figured out and we're back at the shop. Probably ain't gonna fool with much tonight cause it's, I'm telling you, it's a scorcher. It's gonna be hot all week long in the high nineties. Um, anyway, I might get out here later tonight after it cools off some fool with this, but I just want to show y'all what I got and my plans for the brakes. As you already seen, I got the pedals out of the old Impala there. I believe they're gonna work just fine and dandily. Uh, they are, they were not, uh, a uh, hydraulic clutch, you know, here's the rod for it. So I won't need that or this piece. I'll have to drill me a hole in the side. The brake, I will use this, uh, what do you call it? Push rod, whatever. I'll use it, might have to lengthen or shorten it, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm basically copying dude's clutch for sure. Here is the master, uh, the uh, slave for the clutch, 59 Ford. Master cylinder supposed to be here today, tonight. Got it from Amazon, got that from Amazon. And the brake is, we're going with manuals. I was going to do power, but, you know, it's pretty small in this engine compartment. I wasn't sure if it's going to have room for a booster. So right now, we're just going to go with manual. This come off of a 69 Corvette. And uh, the way you can tell whether or not your master cylinder is for manual or power, measure the bore. Usually, uh, manuals, they're going to be an inch, seven-eighths. I think some aftermarkets might be three quarter. If it's any bigger than that, like an inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, um, that's going to be your power brakes. And I think that may be, you know, y'all probably heard me talk about dudes' brakes not being all that great. You really got to stand on them. More than likely, Daddy put a power master cylinder on there, and it needs to be manual. We'll look at that sometime. Pull that uh, master cylinder off and measure the board. And if it's like an inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth, then we'll we'll go get us a different master cylinder and it'll probably help them brakes out a lot. But anyway, that's what we're doing. We'll use these pedals out of the Impala. By the way, if I'd have got a 69 Impala master cylinder, these were manual. It'd have been just fine, but I figure Corvette, you know, it's sort of a hot rod, so those they may be, you know, may stop a little better. I don't know. That's just what I picked. As long as this bolt pattern here matches on my replacement, that's all I care about. Speaking of you remember, uh, I believe his name was Ossie, sent me this with all the other brake parts and that big stack of uh, license plates a few weeks ago. This is manual. It measures one inch bore and it would work, but I didn't know, I don't know what it is exactly. It's got some numbers there. I looked him up and can't find nothing out. So I didn't want to use it and then try to find a replacement. It couldn't because of you know, the bolt pattern. So anyway, we're going to go with the Corvette master cylinder. That's pretty much the brakes. Of course, I gotta make me a hanger for these. It's gonna mount to the firewall. Um, that firewall, it's a little flimsy. So what we might do, uh, cause it's gonna bolt directly to the firewall. What I might do, I might have to come here on the dash somewhere and uh, put me a brace there to help it out a little bit. Um, but that's, yes sir, that is the plan for the brakes right now. Like I said, it's about a bazillion degrees in here. I tell you what, let me show you all this. I forgot to show you this. My handy dandy assistant got me this here a few weeks ago. I'm telling y'all, told you before, I'm gonna tell you again. <laughs> Get you a handy dandy assistant. He's both handy and dandy. He got me this air conditioner, yes sir. It's a two ton. It ain't quite enough for this shop. Uh, it, it won't do nothing until I get it insulated, but it's, well, it was free and it's gonna work. We're gonna use it probably wait till next spring to hook it up it's i think 10 years old but i don't think it was ran very much so that's awesome right there two ton probably need at least a three maybe a four but what i might do we'll hook that up see what it does after i get it insulated and if i have to i can buy one of those mini splits and hang that sucker right here because this table and right here is where i work most of the time i have that sucker blowing right on me right here I, it might do all right. Speaking of insulation, I've rattled on quite a bit, but anyway, speaking of insulation, this is this is the deal. See these two B4s that I got for braces? Well, I'm gonna pull them off. I'm going to mount a two by six on every every two by four here, and then run bad insulation this way. 
then after we do that, you know, we got a sawmill now. And my handy dandy assistant, he come up with this idea too. Uh, we got a sawmill, we're gonna get us some logs. And once I get this insulated, um, we're gonna make us some three quarter by whatever boards. And I'm gonna line this entire shop with rough cut sawmill lumber. Yes, sir, I think that's gonna look very, very pretty. Um, I don't know when we'll get to do that. We'll do it in the coming months. I do need to get insulated pretty quickly before winter gets here. That's planted, and also this shelf, I love, I love this as a shelf. Well, I'm gonna put two by sixes here for the insulation. Well, I'm gonna go with a two by eight, or maybe even a two by 10 on this run, and I'll have my shelf back, because I really, really like my shelf. Anyway, uh, yeah, I've rambled on quite a bit. I'm gonna do some figuring on this. Probably won't see y'all till tomorrow, because it's really hot and I ain't gonna stay out here very long. Let me show you what I'm working on right here. Uh, trying to figure out where these pedals are gonna be, how high and all that. They're gonna be approximately right there. Well, as you can see, my feet are gonna be really close to that steering shaft column. Well, it's in the wrong place. They moved it down here when he put that V8 in there. Well, we're going back with rack pinions so that steering box will be gone. So we're gonna move the steering column right back up here where it goes. That'll get that out of the way of my feet. And I got the old pedals out. I'm working on getting that steering column out right now. And it's probably been 50 years since it's been apart. But right there, well, they had the U-bolt. You know, welded this little bracket on there with a the U-bolt holding that in. It's, it's, well, it's junk. It's got to go, steering box has got to go. That's what I'm working on right now. Ooh I gotta get this U-bolt loose first. That's wrong size, I do believe. I gotta get that shaft loose from this U joint some kind of way. I can't be yanking on it because the thing here yanked it off the jack stands. I don't know if I can get a punch in there and we'll fold it or not. That's how you do it. All right, I got the steering moved back up here where it goes, and I'm concerned now that that may hit the um, valve cover. I'm gonna look at some old video before we pull this motor out and see, you know, about where that valve cover is. That might be an issue. Uh, we'll just have to work around it. But anyway, I got my pedal assembly set up right here. There's my brake master cylinder. And here's my clutch master cylinder. It just showed up a few minutes ago. Um, what I'm going to have to do on the clutch, I'm going to have to come out here with a little arm and then go in with my rod there. Ain't nothing major. But this is pretty much how it's going to be. I, like I said, I'm comparing it to dude. You know, I like dude's pedals pretty good. So that's how I'm going to set these up. And I measured the ones in my car too. And they're, they're similar. Um, anyway, I got partial measurements anyway. This plate on the back, it's going to go from here to here and it's going to be six inches tall this way of course there'll be holes drilling you see right here and then that's my rod this rod here running through the pedals gonna be at an inch and a half ten inches wide six inches long of course you know i have a piece here that's angled sort of like a gusset and same thing over here and then a piece on the top um well i've got just enough room from this rib down to here for what i'm doing um, we may not have to brace it up. We'll just have to see how, you know, how stiff it feels once I get it made. If it's just a little flimsy, I'll, I'll run the brakes back to the dash or something. But anyway, I think I got my measurements. So, uh, tomorrow, this, this is what we're gonna work on. All right, I have been measuring today, uh, figuring on all this. I've changed my plans just a little bit. I was going to use this bolt and leave the pedals like they were stock. That presents too much of an issue. I was gonna have a side piece here and one here. Well, it interferes with my bolts and my master cylinder. So we're gonna get rid of this. And the whole thing is gonna be 10 inches wide from here to here. And then I'll have to make me some spacers and my own bolt. And let, that'll let me move this clutch pedal over too because remember I was gonna have a piece sticking out here and then a rod. I don't have to do that now. 
I can put that wherever I want to if I make my own bolt. And of course, there'll be a center divider here for support. Um, then after I figured all that out, well, I've had that pedal assembly under the dash about 50,000 times. Yes, sir. Keep measuring and measuring. Go out there and measure the car, and I'll measure the dude, and I'll come back here. And I told y'all it takes me forever to make up my mind how I'm going to do something. But once I get there, well, you can't hardly change my mind. I think I've got it figured out how I want to. Got my new measurements. Um, went to the metal store this morning, and they don't have, I wanted to build it out of 3 16ths. Well, they don't have 3 16ths or 8th in 10 inches wide. You have to cut it from a sheet, and he acted like he didn't want to do that. So, ended up having to go a quarter inch. We bit overkill, but you do what you got to do. Let's go over and cut this first piece of metal. Well, now that I have actually cut a piece and then had time to think about it, I believe I could have got away with the, uh, the eight inch piece of three sixteenths as wide as he had. Yes, sir. Could have. Uh, this was seven. I was thinking my, this is going against the firewall like that, by the way. I was thinking the top piece needed to be 10 inches. I don't think it does. So I could have got away with the eight inch, but whatever. We'll use what we got. Anyway, like I said, this is going against the fly, uh, firewall right here. See this bend? From that bend down to this bend is seven inches. It's about 12 inches this way. That's what I got to work with. This piece is seven inches to match that. Um, I gotta get my bolt holes and I gotta get this center hole. Uh, I know this center hole is gonna be four and a half inches from the top down. So I gotta find that line first. You know, this one will be the same way. Then I gotta determine where my bolt holes are gonna be Probably a half to three quarter inch from the side over here. Uh, not sure yet. I'll have to do some more measuring. Anyway, that's what I'm working on now. When I get those figured out, then we can do the sides and the top. They're they're easy. Um, anyway, let me let me get this marked. I'll be right back. All right, I got my holes marked and punched right there and right there. Four and a quarter inches down is what I ended up going with. And uh, well, this is about how far apart they will be when they're finally mounted on the firewall. Just like it right there. And it gives me plenty of room for my bolts. And I think I can get in here to my brake line. So I think that'll work just fine and dandily. And these, I'm gonna cut them out to a two inch hole because you know we got our boots here and whatnot. So two inches would be plenty. Well, I got this little hole saw set. And it says it's for wood and metal, but look at them teeth. I don't know how well that's gonna do on metal, but it's all I got, so we're gonna try it anyway. That little drill press, it ain't gonna do a two inch hole. So let's take this and this over to mama's and uh, we'll drill these holes out. All right, it is set up and ready to go. Let's get this hole drilled out. I'll tell you what I'm pretty impressed with that cutter right there yes sir I didn't think it would do nothing all right put this here clamp a lamp on it all right that's rock and roll All right, now that we got these big old holes drilled out, next I gotta get my bolt holes. Um, not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that because I gotta get it centered in the hole. I gotta get my bolts, holes, you know, um, level, whatever you wanna call it. So let me set something up in the vise and then we'll, we'll work on that. I already got the master cylinder here in the vise. I'm just gonna eyeball 
center on that hole. And I'm going to eyeball the uh, holes this way and that way. We're going to clamp her. Then we'll flip it over and see what it looks like. All right, let me measure from here to there. I think it's a little crooked. That is about three and three quarters. This is about three and three quarters. Well, okay. I guess my eyes failing me because that looks pretty level. All right, I can't get a punch in there. But about the only thing I can do is paint it. I think it got it. Take it off and see. Yeah, that's good enough. Let me get my punch and my hummer. Looks pretty doggone good. Now let's drill that out. What size is that hole? Seven sixteenths. Tell you what, just to give us some room, let's do a half inch, it'd be all right. Yeah. It might would help if I tightened that up. Yeah, it might. <laughs> Alright, let's get this one bolt in here, see what we look like. Pretty doggone close. If it ain't right, well, I can always waller the hole out. Let me drill this, I'll be right back. All right, I got the second hole drilled. So let's see if they line up or not. No, sir, it's nowhere close. <laughs> How in the world did I get that far off on that hole? What in the devil? Let me go back to the to the drill. Actually, I'm gonna use a hand drill and waller that out. That is pitiful. No, sir. <laughs> Still like quite a bit that way. No, sir. It ain't, uh, it's going the wrong way. It's going this way. Let me water this one out a little bit, too. All right, I just hit it with a die grinder because the drill wasn't doing it. Let's see if it works now. Yes, sir, finally. That'll work. Um, I need some longer bolts, but we ain't going to worry about that right now. Let's do the clutch master cylinder bolt holes. All right, now we gotta do the same thing with the clutch. Gotta eyeball it. That's sheer. Put the clamp on it. Flip it over and check it out. All right, I think that's pretty close. So now, I can use my transfer punches on this one here. Y'all know the drill. You mark one, you drill it, bolt it. Mark another and drill it, bolt it. So on and so forth. All right, let me get them drilled. I'll be right back. All right, well, I got both of them mounted. I did not have to do any precision hole wallering on these, these here. I did pretty good on them, but yeah, they're pretty straight. Uh, now, I gotta take these off, and I guess we'll flip her around. We'll do our vertical pieces first, and then we'll get her top. I'm just gonna tack it together first, and you know, make sure everything's like I want it, and then we'll weld it up later. Well, I got my side pieces cut, uh, but this is the, this is the second go round. There's my first ones, right there. Yes, sir, they were too small. I miscalculated a little bit, so I had to redo. And the reason I decided on this shape was, well, the uh, metal that was left over after I cut them wrong, it was in this shape right here, and it, well, it worked. So I figured, well, let's go with it. 
Um, those pieces over there, they were too short to drill my hole for my, my shaft to go through. So I had to make these a little bit longer. So that's what I did. Now what I'm gonna do is stack them on top of each other like this, mark a top one, clamp them together and uh, drill my hole for my shaft. And then we got to go to mama's and make my shaft. Um, so, well, I gotta get some measurements off that. I ain't real sure what size it is. This is five eighths, but it had these bushings in it. So I'm not going back with the bushings. So um, it's gonna be some kind of oddball size probably. Anyway. Let me drill these holes. We'll head to Mama's and start making my shaft. All right, here we are. I got this set up. I'm just setting my backstop up, but we got to turn this down to 11 to 16, which is 687. Uh, this is one inch, so we got to take 5 16 off. This actually used to be a boring bar daddy made. Well, it's gonna get sacrificed because I got to have a bolt. Anyway, let me get this turned down to 687. what's going on but I moved her in 30 thousandths it didn't cut I moved her in another 20 thousandths it ain't cut I ain't got a clue let me turn that cutter to the next point I'm just making sure I ain't going too far. That's 720. I don't know what's going on. That's that's very odd. Huh. Yeah, it's cutting about 10 thousandths and I've done moved it. Well, quite a bit. I don't know. All right, we're now at approximately 700, good gracious, we're under there, so that's good, and we're under there, so that's good, awesome, yep, <laughs> that's how we're out to lay this, yeah, I need to be 687, that's 700, 680, 675, yep, way under here, way over here, that's awesome, so, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a few thousands here because this, it'll never fit the way it is. That's dead on right there. So, I'm going to go to right here, take about ten thousands. Let's just see what happens right there. Fellas, this is what you have to do when you got wore out machinery. Some of y'all didn't believe me. Well, maybe you will now. Where are we at? Where are we at? That is about 82. I'll tell you what. Let's see if them pedals will fit. Here's the clutch pedal. Oh yeah. That fits pretty good. What about the brake pedal? So 
a little bit tight right there. I think it'll work. Yes, sir, I do. Now what I gotta do, we got to part it off. Yay, I get to use the parting tool. <laughs> Tell you what, that's a lot better than what it normally does. Now what I gotta do is cut this off a little bit, cut it to length. Uh, see how it's sort of hollow in there? That's where I drilled it for this uh, live center. Let me get this out of there first though. With our tis, it'll be a little bit straighter, hopefully, once I get it welded up, but that's pretty much it. I gotta have a spacer here and here, here and here. I gotta thread that for a nut, but that's pretty much it, yes, sir. We will do spacers tomorrow and weld it up. I gotta go to the metal store, get me another piece for the top, you know, because I messed up. Uh, anyway, it's late, I'm tired, I'm going home. See y'all tomorrow. Well, I done been to the metal store today and got what I needed to finish. Um, these this pedal assembly right here i'll get it cut we'll get this tacked together then we'll head to mama's and uh get our spacers made in between the pedals and whatnot i got a piece of round seven eighths to do that we'll chuck it up in the lathe and bore it out and we'll part it off whatever size we need length uh but let me show you this right here first a feller by the name of randy he watches the channel subscriber he messaged me yesterday and uh said he was going to be coming through town and he had a bunch of stuff to give me. Well, here it is right here. <laughs> he wasn't lying. It's a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Got a couple of things. Wipes there. And there's some rags. Uh, that's wasp and hornet spray. I could have used that <laughs> the other day. May go back with a can of that. See if we can't get rid of them yellow jackets. Anyway, I got some crow oil there. And that's, let me tell you, that stuff ain't cheap. Some degreaser. There's some more degreaser. And then this little bottle of Earl. Uh, Zoom spout oiler finest all-purpose turbine lubricating oil i think what i might use this for is um air air gun oil yes sir because my my air tools they don't they don't get oil like they should that's probably what we're we'll useful um whilst i'm showing you stuff well i got four or five other things to show you let me get them out here is the first one um chad you said send me something so how about a lifter puller tom k where are you from tom let me let me find the label you are from Savannah, Missouri. M-O, is that Missouri? I think it is. Anyway, I didn't even know a lifter puller existed. I sure didn't. Um, I left my camera stand over at Mama, so I can't put this together with one hand. But that screws on there, and then this end swells out. You know, we stick that in the lifter, and uh, that end swells out. And then I'm assuming this thing here slides. I'm assuming you use it like a slide hammer. And pull your lifter out. That's pretty neat. I honestly did not know that existed. Appreciate that, Tom. Next thing I got is from Danny. He's from Greenville, Florida. And wrote me a message on the box. I've, I've, never, I've never had that done before. Um, let me get this out real quick. Well, he's got it wrapped up pretty good. We'll cut it open in a minute. But let me read this. For your dad's coupe motor 283 or whatever you want to use it on. Uh, we'll open it up in a second, but let me see what this here message says. I seriously, I've never had this happen before. I'm gonna try to cover up his address. Uh, what does it say? Hey, Chad, love your videos. Here's something you might like for your dad's coupe build, uh, 2A3 motor. All right, well, let me cut this open and see what it is. I don't have it completely unwrapped yet, but I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Feels like valve covers. Let's see what they are. Yes, sir, that sure is what they are. Well, I think I always got them wire tied together. Let me get them out. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I like those. Uh, those are the, well, they're, you know, like a 283. There's no holes in them. And they got the Chevrolet on them and the chrome. Yeah, I like those a lot. Well, you know the ones on the 283 there, they're the same way, but they're not chrome. I love, love that right there. That Chevrolet, that's awesome. Appreciate that, Danny. I got a couple more. Let me go get them. Got this here package and it has some uh, hall green clamp pliers. Um, I haven't had a chance to use them yet, um, but we will. Well, let me show you what I bought though. I bought these here while I bought right after the Dodge. Remember I fought with 
um, them hall green clamps on it. Well, I bought these off Amazon. Let me tell you, these, well, I tried using them on the Dodge here a couple weeks ago. <laughs> these, these right here ended up getting slung across the shop. Yeah, they're gonna probably get thrown away. Hopefully these work a little bit better. Uh, that's from Corky in Arkansas, by the way. Appreciate that, Corky. They might come in handy. Then what we got is these little fellas right here. I had been thinking about getting some of these. It's a gun holder or, you know, whatever holder. Uh, you know, and I got, well, uh, y'all probably seen this in the background. I got my cabinets, some of them situated anyway. And then I went and got one from, I had over at Mama's in the basement. And then I got to clean those up. And those are probably going to be supply cabinets like all the stuff I just got. Um, but anyway, I got them set up. Here's my battery central. I got to, I got to cut me a hole in the side to run all my cords through. Um, and, and I'm glad, I think there's two of these in this box. Let me see. Well, it may be more than two. No, it's two. Two of them in that box. So that'll let me get my guns out of this cabinet. And then we'll put some other stuff in that cabinet. I just don't know where I'm going to hang them because, you know, they need to be right here somewhere. But I ain't really got no room because I'm going to have a table and a refrigerator here. Matter of fact, I may go buy a refrigerator this weekend. So I'm not sure where I'm going to put them. But that's going to be handy and dandy just to... You know, set my gun here. I ain't got to fumble through that cabinet to find them. Yep. Uh, this is from, well, it doesn't say who it's from. Uh, it's some kind of, I can't say that word, direct from Georgia. Um, I don't know who these are from, but whoever sent them, there's nothing inside. Whoever sent these, I appreciate that a bunch because that'll be, that'll be handy and dandy. Also, and oh, by the way, remember the other day how I told you about the air conditioner that my uh, handy dandy assistant got me well i forgot to tell you that came from one of our friends uh his name is chad also uh, he remodeled his house a few years ago and tore that unit out and uh, he's the one that gave it to me so appreciate that a bunch i think it's it's like four thousand degrees out so seriously it's 96 i'm sure the humidity is 96 thousand i'm gonna i'm gonna try to get this metal cut get this pedal assembly tacked up and then we'll head over to mama's but anyway, appreciate all the stuff y'all send me. That's awesome. Uh, my P.O. box will always be in the description of the video if you want to send me something. If you don't, well, that's fine too. I got every fan I can find blowing on me because I'm telling you, it's, <laughs> it is hot in here. So maybe you can hear what I'm saying. Maybe not. I don't know. But I got my top piece cut. It's right here. Fix it well, these pieces up here first. We'll tack them in. Then we'll put the top on. Well, the Artis, it don't look too bad, I don't think. A little bit heavy, <laughs> but yeah, it looks pretty good. Still got to do the spacers here, spacers here. I got to turn this down to half inch. Uh, you know, put a nut on it, because I don't have no 11 16 nut. Um, let's head to Mama's, start making them spacers. I'm turning the end of the shaft down right now to half inch, and then I got to run a die over it. Once we get done with that, uh, I reckon we'll start on making them spacers. Got the end of my shaft turned down, threaded the ester. Um, I will probably go with a Teflon nut. I'll have to go to town to get one tomorrow, but that'll do for now. Um, got my pedals lined up with their holes. Matter of fact, this one right here, it's got a hole for the uh, push rod to fit in. Oh yeah, pretty nice. This is lined up too. Uh, got my measurement here. The first one is gonna be 2.3 inches. So let's get to the lathe and go to cutting our spacers. All right, first thing we gotta do, we gotta drill this out to 11 to 16 inches. 
Um, really, that's all we got to do, and then part it off wherever I need it. So, let me get to drilling. than the devil himself, let me tell you. <laughs> Alright, let's get this first one in. See how she does. Where's my pedal? Oh, here it is. Not bad, not bad at all. It may be just a wee bit long. That's kind of interesting. Let me do some measuring real quick. Well, this needs to come around a little bit. That's probably what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. That looks pretty doggone good now. Um, I'm not going to bore y'all showing you the other three I'm going to make. When I get done with that, I'll be back. Well, there is my extreme <laughs> heavy duty. <laughs> Brake and clutch pedal assembly. Yes, sir. I really hate that I had to build that out a quarter inch. I'm telling you, it's kind of heavy, but anyway, um, it'll be fine. This ain't no race car. I ain't worried about weight. Um, this spacer here is a little tight. Um, you know, I wanted this kind of tight because the hole in this clutch pedal, it bored out a little bit too big and it was a little wobbly. Um, I might take it out and grind just a little bit off of it, but it'll probably be all right. Brake pedal, it's just fine and dandily. Only thing we like on this is welding it up, and I'm not going to fully weld it. I'm just going to do one inch welds here and there. Um, anyway, I got welded up. We got to fix some springs for both of them, and uh, I got to make a push rod for the clutch over here. Then we put it in the car. Uh, ain't going to happen this week. We're out of time in this video. Maybe we'll get this done next week. Hopefully next week we'll finish the brakes up. Then we got to start on steering. But before I do that, I really need to mount the motor because I'm changing the motor mounts. I'll make sure nothing's in the way of the other. Uh, be looking for that next week. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blur.